Hi guys, welcome to today's session. Um, this is the second in this series looking at a very simple fruit still life study. Um, so the idea is that you'll be working from your own particular fruit subject but taking the exact same approach uh, that I have. Um, if you watched the first session, um, you'll remember that what we did was uh, basically just paint in the shadow forms in this, this piece. So looking at the shadow forms in the, the ground plane, the um, shadow on the lemon, shadow behind the lemon, um, well, which is sort of a dark background, I suppose. Um, so we sort of made some decisions about what was going to be light and what was going to be dark. What we're going to do this week is um, do something called dead coloring, which is basically adding the sort of local colors to each of these regions that we've, we've blocked in. And we're also going to start to develop form slightly, which is making it look three-dimensional. Um, we're not worried too much about texture yet. What we're looking for today is a good approximation of these colors um, and starting to give a sense of the, the lemon having some sense of roundness, a sense of three-dimensionality. Um, so the palette is going to be more expanded. Last week we were just working with burnt umber, um, but this week um, we're going to be adding in a few more pigments. So we've got, um, or I've got a little bit of titanium white on my palette already. So my palette's up next to the, the canvas. I've got some uh, cadmium yellow, which is going to be useful for these brighter tones in the lemon. Um, some yellow ochre, which will be used for more of the muted colors. Um, uh, actually, I don't think in this one I'm using yellow ochre, so it's just going to be cadmium yellow that will temper down with the burnt umber. Um, and we're also going to be using a bit of raw umber, um, so we'll pop a bit of raw umber there on my palette, which is sort of like a yellowy grey brown, and then a bit of burnt umber, which is what we used last week, which is this much redder brown that you can see as it's being washed in from the wash drawing stage. And some Prussian blue, which <coughs> we, where is that? I'm gonna need to pop around and grab my Prussian. which we may or may not need. I'm not entirely certain about the Prussian blue. We're going to be using ivory black as well, which does provide a blue tone, um, although albeit a very gray blue. Um, so ivory black is essentially a very low chroma, very low chroma, very low saturation blue. Um, so in terms of sort of lemons often have this kind of greeniness to them. Um, so to temper the sort of warmth of the, the cadmium yellow, um, I'm going to be using the Prussian blue. You could use a, a locally sort of greeny yellow, so something like a lemon yellow is a common one to use. Um, but this is sort of using a more standardized palette that would be flexible, and we'll be looking at how we can sort of mix colors to, to match that. Um, in terms of other tools, I'm just going to be mostly painting with some sort of larger, kind of medium-sized bristle brushes, nothing too, too small and detailed today. Um, and I've got my sort of down the bottom corner here, my palette cups, which just has some um, mineral spirits mixed with a little bit of linseed oil this time. So last week we were just using um, mineral spirits straight, and this week we've mixed in a little bit of linseed oil. And each week we're going to mix in a little bit more linseed oil to mineral spirit in proportion. So the first thing I'm going to paint in is the background. So I'm going to basically be graying down the background, so putting this dark um, sort of background tone a lighter gray and then a shadow color which is going to be pretty much the same as that dark background. <clears throat> and I'm going to do that with just black and white because that's going to give a pretty good approximation and use my larger brush. I'm going to take a bit of medium, a little bit of white paint and quite a lot of quite a lot of black to mix up a nice kind of average dark tone and lay that on. I don't have to lay it super smoothly. Um, a little bit of the burnt umber showing through is not a, a big deal. It's actually in some ways quite nice um, because it, it breaks up that gray slightly, so stops it from being sort of too drab as a background. And I'm just using those, uh, the shapes that are already in place. So I'm not doing any drawing. That's why we did the wash drawing last week. So we can just focus on coloring and starting to get some form in this week. Um, dead colouring as a, as a term is used because 
we're only going to be kind of mainly adding color in rather than starting to develop form. So it's not going to necessarily have a sort of strong sense of form um, or that much sort of life to it. We're just kind of focusing on getting these colors correct. gone slightly lighter with this background plane, um, just because I feel it's a little bit heavy in the original, um, so I've just made a little bit of a decision about that. <coughs> Ideally you would obviously be, you know, in an ideal practice for painting from life. So mix up a slightly darker gray. I can go for a sort of little bit of a gradient uh, in this background plane. So maybe a little bit darker down the bottom of the background. So you can just mix into the, the color that's there on the surface, uh, which is one of the nice things about oil. We can always go in and sort of adjust things as we go. So that's given an ever so slight gradient, nothing too severe. The shadow on the floor, I'm also going to make a dark grey, almost sort of moving towards pure black. So again, just popping that in. Over the top of the original drawing. <coughs> so that's why this is a nice way to work, because we've sort of sorted out the drawing already. Um, so when we get to actually adding colour, things are a little bit simpler. So I've got my shadow in now. And I'm going to mix. Now add some um, some white to kind of lighten this off a little bit. I'm now going to paint in a little bit of a ground plane. I'm going to put a gradient on the ground plane as well. So the back of the ground plane is going to be a little bit darker than the front of this ground plane. shadow so I can just neaten that up by grabbing a little bit more of that dark pigment and blending that up. You can start to sort of smudge things out, blend them out a little bit, um, which is something we'll be doing in later sessions more. But if it starts to naturally happen, as you paint in at this stage, that's that's fine. You can see I'm just sort of adjusting to the size of the brush, I'm not too fussed. If it's slightly messy at this point. We're just laying these colours in so we've got sort of like a starting point to work from. One of those instances where it's sort of a method of working that's um, a bit more relaxed just because we we separate the stages out we're not trying to not like doing an alla prima where we'd be trying to get everything down at the same time so we can just go over this to kind of soften the penumbra underneath as i say I maybe lost the shape slightly there of the, the shadow, so to refine that. Can 
just change the shape like that. And the final thing I want is just a slightly lighter grey for the foreground plane, or the front of the foreground plane. So I can lay that down the front and then just gradually blend it up. reasonably roughly blocked in. So you can see it wasn't too kind of fussy the way that I painted that. Um, so allow yourself to be reasonably loose with it. We're gonna have quite a lot of, we're gonna have a couple more sessions so we'll have chances to make corrections um, to any of these shapes or these tones. We're just going for a, a good approximation as a starting point. So we can sort of get it all blocked in now and make it perfect later. So the next thing I want to do is mix up a shadow tone for the lemon, which is going to be a sort of, we're going to go for a kind of darkish yellow. So as I say, I can see, if I mix a little bit of black into the yellow, see if that goes dark enough or blue enough. I think maybe I will need a little bit of Prussian blue, maybe a bit of burnt umber mixed into that. So trying to find a balance between all these things so it doesn't go, that's gone a little bit too green pull that back to being more yellow. That's sufficiently dark. The raw umber might be useful at this point as well. Doesn't seem too bad. Possibly not quite yellow enough. Mix a little bit more cat yellow into it, and we'll try that. So again, I'm just kind of laying this over where those shadows already were. maybe slightly on the green side. So I'll see if I mix a little bit of burnt umber into it, kind of try to warm it out slightly. Just aiming for the right kind of level of yellowness but also keeping it pretty dark because it's quite a dark tone. This might be something that we get a bit closer to achieving uh, with glazes as well. a tone laid in but as I say it probably feels me it feels a little bit 
too greenish, so I'm going to start just paint in a little bit of yellow into that, try to adjust it to more of a yellow tone. And maybe a little bit more burnt umber as well, just to deflect some of that greenishness of it. It's not, not too bad as a starting point. Um, so I'm going to pop in the, the lighter yellow tone now. And the lighter yellow tone should be a bit simpler. Um, we're going to be using more of the just the cadmium yellow. So I'm going to start with that as a basis and see how it looks. So that's not too bad, that yellow. It's going to need a little bit of more of a kind of greenishness to it. Maybe a little bit of white mixed in as well. Because um, we're trying to balance it out against the, the darker yellow in the shadow. And I'm going to just be pretty approximate with the, the shapes. As I say, we're just primarily focusing on the colors right now. thinking a little bit more about the kind of turning of the form uh, next week. We'll do a little bit of it um, in a moment, but as I say, more just blocking these, this patching this color in. But you can see already just getting those really basic uh, colors and tones in. It's starting to come together a lot more than say the position it was at last week, just with that initial block in. So it's a nice simple process and great if you're You want a little kind of exercise to work on, but you, know, you might not want, not want to necessarily do a full portrait or a landscape or something like that. This is a good, good little exercise to work on. I'm not going to worry too much about the highlight as well. Highlights are a little bit distinct. We'll be talking about them later um, from the rest of the form. But I will put a little bit of a kind of sense of it turning. So I'm going to try to get a transition from the lighter yellow to this dark yellow tone. I'm just going to try out a few kind of half tone colors so they're going to be a kind of darker tone You can see that that addition of the half tone is just starting to turn it, turn that form a little bit more. sort of nitty gritty of the, the form until next week. Um, we're just sort of establishing a little bit of a transition into this. So 
So I don't want to push it push it too far in terms of detail. I'm just about at a point where I can leave it be and let it dry. But I can mess around a little bit with that shadow edge. It's kind of useful as well for figuring out, you know, what what mixed color mixtures I'm going to be using ultimately. So I've already started to explore a bit um, what I need to reach the different yellows in the different parts of the painting. So um, you know, I ended up having to go for a cut, sort of more of a greeny yellow in the in the shadow worked quite well with this palette. Um, if you're using different paints, um, you don't have to use exactly the same paints that I've recommended. Um, you maybe find that different mixtures will work for different parts of your piece, and it depends on what you're painting as well. You're not all going to be painting lemons, I imagine. Um, so whatever you pick is going to have an impact on how the piece appears. Um, so we maybe go for a little bit of white and some a little bit more cad yellow, just try to get a slightly lighter tone into the center of the lemon. Toy around with that a little bit. As I say, I'm not going for the highlight, which is this sort of reflected light on the lemon, just the lighter tones in the local color of the lemon. The highlight or the reflection, or the highlight is a reflection, um, so it's sort of distinct from the values in the lemon itself. I'll be talking about that in future sessions on this piece. So I've just got a lighter tone and then I just mix it in, mix it in as I go and yeah, that's not too bad. So I've lost a little bit of the shape um, of the lemon, but I'm reasonably happy with those those sort of dead colors blocked in. So it's a very simplified version <coughs> of what I'm looking at. Um, and then next week we can start to use some techniques where we sort of do a little bit of glazing. We can correct some of the shapes. Um, but what we wanted is just to get something roughly blocked in that works pretty well. The looking at it actually, the last thing I just want to do is I just want to soften off. So I've just taken the brush with a little bit of that yellow color. I just want to soften. I just want to break down this edge slightly. So I'm just rubbing it against the background tone, um, and that's just because if we do need to make any corrections to the shape of the lemon, I'm not going to have a sort of hard edge showing through. So just sort of smudging that edge out. The other thing you could do is, like I could take a, a totally clean brush that I haven't been using and just run that along the edge. That's a bit of a easier to control way to do this and just soften that edge off that way. Um, and it ensures that we don't have anything, any too sharp edges so we can make adjustments kind of within that, that boundary. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for today. So pretty straightforward. The whole of this process is meant to be a, a fairly kind of manageable start to oil painting. Um, so we're just looking at one object. We're looking at one, generally one color. You know, something like an apple might have multiple colors, but for the most part, a single color. A single form sitting in a, a fairly simple location. Um, I'll zoom in a little bit just to finish off. So you guys can sort of see my mixtures on my palette. focus that in as well. So you can see the mixtures on my palette. You can sort of see <coughs> excuse me, how the how the lemon is looking. Um, but yeah, it's really simple basically. We've just, you know, taken those shadows, found all the major little colour groups, um, popped those colours in, adjusted them if necessary. But I'm not too fussed about the exact shapes. There's some work I need to do on all these shapes I can already see. The main thing is I have the effect of the lemon. It's roughly working as I want it to work and it'll be a good base to carry on with. So yeah, that's it. Um, as always, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel um, to watch this and other video series, um, visit the blog, or you can um, go to the OCAD page to sign up for our any of our courses or our open course. Um, there's a range that's available to you guys. So yeah, that's it, and I'll see you guys soon.